Amen. Praise God. Amen. Good to see everyone this morning. Amen. I know uh, for a minute there, some kind of said, somebody go back and wake that preacher up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I thank the Lord for who he is and what he's doing in our lives. Yeah. Pastor, thank you for this preaching opportunity Amen. this morning. And I want to thank all of you for being here. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles this morning, will you be finding the book of Amos, chapter 4? Amos, chapter 4. I want you to stand and read with me. We're going to start at verse 6 and go to verse 13. Amos chapter 4, verse 6 to 13. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and the lack of bread in all your places. Yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Also I have withholden the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not with it. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have they not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and myrrhody when your gardens and your vineyards, your fig trees and olive trees increased. The palmer warm devoured them. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you pestilences, pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with a sword. Have taken away your horses. Have made the stink of your camp to come up under your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, said the Lord. I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, said the Lord. Yes. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he formed the mountains and created the wind, declaring unto man what is his thought, that he maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. Let's go back one verse, for this is the verse that our topic is coming from. It says, Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Yes, Thank you. You may be seated. This morning I want to talk with you about how to prepare to meet God. Amen. Preparing to meet God. Amen. Yes, indeed. Friends, in each of our lives, God is orchestrating and He's doing things to bring us to Him. Amen. And here we see in Israel, he allowed many things that we consider to be bad to happen in their lives so that they would return unto him. But yet, they return not unto him. We often say that if the love of God does not need a person, a man, a woman, a boy or girl to repent, then the judgment of God will not either. Amen. And God here now 
is about to bring judgment upon Israel. Yeah. He's allowed all these things that we would consider to be negative, bad, detrimental, right. chaotic, chaos to happen to them. But yet in the midst of all of that, they returned not unto him. Amen. And so he said that judgment is coming and prepare to meet your God. Yes, sir. Well, friend, I want to be one of those who prepare to meet God Amen. without judgment. Yes, uh, I, I want to go willingly to, to, and prepare and be ready. Yes, sir. Not because I've been judged or chastised. Okay. But thank God that he loves us so yes, that he corrals our lives yes. and bring us to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He ordains our steps, Pastor. Uh -huh. Yes, he does. He orchestrates our successes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, indeed. God is, is working and moving us, whether you realize it or not. Yes, sir. Yeah. You see, we, we got some issues in our lives. Yes, sir. You know, we were talking about the, uh, last Sunday when Pastor Freak, uh, uh, we, we presented the question, what doeth hinder me? Uh -huh. uh, how to begin the new year? How do you begin? With search me, oh God. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, you see, but we don't want to be searched. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We don't want nobody in our business. Yeah. Oh, no. But you see, there's no thought that you can have that God doesn't already know. Uh -huh. He knows your uprisings and your down cities. He knows what's going on uh, uh, in your thoughts uh, uh, far off. Yeah. That means even before the thoughts get to your mind, He knows what you're thinking and why you're thinking. Yeah. You know what your issues are, and I know what mine are. Yeah. And God knows them all, you see, because Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding both good and evil. Let me ask you a question this morning. Are you prepared to meet God? Mm -hmm. yes. Right now? Yes. What if he were to come for us, all of us, each of us, right now? Yeah. Would you want to meet him in the state that you're in now? And the condition that you're in, yes. and your way of living, your way of thinking, and the things that you do, would, would you say uh, happily and cheerfully, yes, come Lord Jesus, or would you say, like most of us, wait a minute Lord, give us a little more time. <laughs> you, you know, it's kind of like somebody knocking at your door and you're not being dressed. You, you may come to the door, but you don't let them in. You say, hold on a minute. <laughs> Are you prepared to meet God? Yes. Are you in right standing with God? Yes. Is God pleased with you? Yes. Uh, yes, right at this moment. Are you winning souls to Christ? Yes. Are you sharing the gospel? Yes. Must I empty handed go? Must I meet my Savior soul without one soul with which to greet him? <laughs> prepared to meet God. Yes, sir. I want to say that just as in the book of Amos this morning, uh -huh. God has allowed all these things to happen to bring his people to him, but yet they return not unto him. That's right. We're living in a day and age now where we have coronavirus and COVID-19 and all these other political things, the storming of the Capitol and people out and storming the Bastille the way they did the, in the French Revolution. Right. Uh, we have all these bad things happening in our society that we're hoping that will pass by us. But God is allowing these things to happen so that he can corral us yes, to him, to bring us back to him. Yes. America needs to repent. Yes. And all the, the citizens of America and the world needs to repent and return to God. Yes, sir. Oh. yes indeed. I want to tell you what, that we have more empty churches in America now than at any other time in America. Oh, yeah, uh, we yeah. have folks who are backsliding from God uh, with a Bible underneath their arms and Jesus on their lips. Mm. And God is saying, I'm allowing all these things to happen yes, sir. so that you will return unto me. Amen. How do you prepare to meet God? You see, praying America's favorite prayer is not going to do it. No. What is America's favorite prayer? What is it? God bless us anyhow. We're not going to do what you say do God. We're not going to return unto you. We're going to live the way we live and what satisfies us 
Uh, but God bless us. Amen. Anyhow. Yes, but he's not going to do it. No, you, gotta preach, preach. You, you see, he says, in Lamech 412, prepare uh -huh. to meet your God. Yes, you know, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, 36, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus, he said, no man know the day or the hour yes, in which he shall appear. That's right. And he tells us in other places, Matthew 25, 13, now be ye therefore ready, right. for you know not what hour your Lord would come. Yes. Are you prepared to meet God? That's right. Yes, indeed. Would God be satisfied with you if he can't walk through the door today and say, time. Uh, uh, if Christ stepped out of the cloud of heaven and took his sickle and stuck it in the earth and said, time shall be no more. You know, there's a time when that's going to happen. But we're talking about being prepared to meet God. I'm going to tell you this before we move on. There are so many people dying from this COVID-19 and coronavirus and, it, and you don't ever know how it it, it leads from one person to another. How you, how you get it? You just know when you got it, you know you got it. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, uh, but you know, uh, anytime you get this coronavirus, you are uh, just like what David said in First Samuel chapter 20, verse 3, when Samuel, when Saul was chasing him. David said in First Samuel chapter 20, verse 3, there is but a step yeah. uh -huh. between me and death. Uh -huh. and when you get that virus, and you get sick enough, you know, uh, you, you start to feel it like it is nothing but a step between you and death. And it may not be nothing but a step between you and death. The question is, though, am I prepared to meet God? Yeah. You see, he's allowed all these things to happen so people will become God conscious and seek him. As Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his Righteousness and all the other things will be added unto it. Yes, uh, as he said in Isaiah 55, 6, seek the Lord while wow. wow. he may be found. Yes, Are you seeking God? Yes. Are you seeking what he wants? Let me give you this real quick. I want to give you five ways on how to prepare to meet God. Five ways on how to meet God. Now let me say this to you. No matter how hard you preach, uh -huh. Pastor and I, Thurman and Dr. Kenneth, Murdine, Pastor Whitfield, Alex, and all the preachers here in this church, that ain't going to happen, but we can all preach, and some may be light enough for it to happen, but we can all preach until we get red in the face. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> And you know that ain't going to happen. <laughs> but Joel 3.14 says, Multitudes, multitudes will be caught in the valley of decision. Yeah. You, you, you see, there are some things that we hold on to so tight that we don't want to give up. We, we, we want time to decide whether we want to decide to get right with God. Uh -huh. You know, gospel song said, don't let it be said, too late. Uh -huh. Too late. The pastor said last Sunday, that it is true, we used to sing a song that said, back, back train and get your load. Yeah. So the evening train, I'm going home on the morning train because the evening train might be too late. Well, I want to tell you what, friend, to get right with God, you better catch the first train that's smoking. <laughs> The train ain't backing up. No, no, no. Even the hairbound train ain't backing up. Because it's getting folks as it's going and it's, and it's moving at a fast rate. Isaiah said in Isaiah 5 14 that hell is enlarging itself every day. Right. Yes, indeed. So Proverbs 27 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. But I'm saying to you, friend, that today. It's today. Now is the time to prepare to be God and to be right with God. Amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. How do we prepare to meet God? Not by praying America's favorite prayer. God bless us in our First of all, number one, we prepare to meet God through his prioritized plan. God has a plan that he prioritized for us. 
Yes. What is the prioritized plan? The, the prioritized plan is to get your soul saved. You see, Jesus said in Luke 19, 10, he said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. He said the same thing in Matthew 18, 11. The prioritized plan is that you, you put first things first and the most important thing in each of our lives in every last one of our lives is to get our souls right with God and to be saved. The prioritized plan is what does it profit a man, Mark 8, 36, to gain the whole world and to lose your own soul. Right. You see, 1 Timothy 6 10 says it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Friend, if you had all the money in the world, if you could get all the money in the world, but you couldn't, you could eventually go up to leave it all or lose it all. Yes, sir. The most important prioritized plan that God has given us is to get our souls saved and right with Him. And I want to tell you, there's only one way to do that. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except he comes by me. He said in Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other soul under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The priority right plan so that we can prepare to meet God is to make sure that our souls are right with God and that we have accepted Christ and believed in Him and as Lord and Savior, and then we're saved. Amen. Yes, and the, that's the priority right plan. That's how we prepare to meet God. Amen. Friend, you can't prepare to meet God trying to work your way to heaven. That's right. You see, for Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, that not of yourselves, not of works, it is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. That's right. The poet said, I cannot work my soul to say, that work my Lord has done. Right. But I work like any slave for the love of God's dear son. Friend, you can't wait, work your way to heaven. That's right. That's you can't right. buy your way to heaven. And you can't right. bribe God. That's right. How do we prepare to meet him? We meet him with the priority right plan that God has given. Yeah. Manifested even as we've learned. Uh, from our youth up, John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right. That if whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, when God gave, he gave his son. When God loved, he loved the world. That's and he right. said, whoever believed and received him shall be saved. That's right. Verse 17 said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him right. might be saved. Yes, indeed. How do we prepare to meet God? We meet Him in the plan that He has prioritized. We meet Him in the prioritized plan by putting what God commands us to put first. Yeah. And He said well, He wants us, each of us, all of us to put Him first, first. in our lives. Yeah. Let me move on real quickly. Not only do we meet Him in the prioritized plan, we prepare uh, to meet Him through the prioritized plan. We prepare to meet him through the pleasing purpose. What is, what is the, the purpose that pleases God? You see, God created all of us for a purpose. And, and, and if we're going to meet him, we be, need to be fulfilling this pleasing purpose to God. Isaiah 4 to 3, 7, he said that he created us for a purpose. And that purpose is for his glory. That's right. Yes, indeed. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive honor, glory, and, and praise. For Thou hast created all things. They are and were created. How? For Thy pleasure. Right. You see, friend, God created us for His pleasure. Amen. If we want to prepare to meet Him, then we ought to be pleasing God. Amen. To please God, we've got to obey the commands that He's given us to love Him uh, above all right. with our hearts my strength and soul, right. and, and to walk by faith. For Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please him. Right. He that coming to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently, diligently seek him. Yeah. You see, faith, hope, and love right. are the ways that we fulfill the pleasing purpose of God. Amen. That we do everything that we do to the glory of God. Even as you sit in the seat that you're sitting in now, uh, you, you sit there to the glory of God, Amen. not the uh, aggrandizement of self. Uh -huh. uh, this preaching ought to be not uh, to, to, 
to bring a perspective of me or to elevate me, but to, to please God and to lift him up and to bring glory to his name. Yes, sir. And everything that we do, if our motive is not to glorify God, is going up in smoke. That's right. We ought to meet him. Amen. And prepare to meet him through the power of the right plan. But prepare to meet him through the preaching purpose. Let it be our purpose. My purpose, your purpose, each of our purpose, to please God. Amen. Helen Stanley Rice, the Port Laurie end of America, said, Life without purpose is barren indeed. Uh -huh. There can't be a harvest unless you plant seed. Right. If you send no ships out, no ships will come in. Unless there's a contest, nobody can win. <laughs> Games can't be won unless they're played. Prayers can't be answered unless they're prayed. Friend, let it, us make our purpose. Yes. To be and to do the things that we be and do to the glory of the Lord. Amen. Number three. How do we prepare to meet God? Not only through the prioritized plan and the pleasing purpose, but we prepare to meet God through the perplexing problems. In this life, you're going to face some problems. Yes. You see what we read in the scripture this morning in Amos chapter 4, starting at verse 6. Uh, they, they, they planted vineyards and, 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 and they grew up and God allowed the palmer worm to eat them. Uh, he, he sent war and, and, and the young men were killed for the sword. Yes. Uh, and you, you see from verse 6 all the way to verse 12, Israel going through problem after problem. Right. Because God is trying to get them to return to him. Amen. We're going to face some perplexing problems in this life. Yes. Everything is not going to be sugar and roses. That's right. Sometimes we have to face some guns and roses. Yeah. I hope if you face a gun, it's, it's empty and there ain't no bullets in it. No. Uh, if you do, the right person is on the other side and they know how to use the, the, the right purpose. I was talking about that the other night. He was talking about his cousin, Joe Lewis. Not the boxer. This Joe Lewis was tougher than the boxer, Joe Lewis. And he said that they were... When they were young men, everywhere they went, they, they had to fight them. Kind of like, what's her name in the color purple? Yeah. What did she say? All my life. All my life. <laughs> I had to fight them. He said they were down in Marion, Arkansas, and, and, the, and the police was arresting Joe Lewis. And then Joe Lewis surrendered to go with him. And as he was walking in the cell, the police pulled his guard out and hit him. Joe Lewis in the back of his head. He didn't know how Joe Lewis, how tough he was. He said, Joe Lewis turned around with Gordon you know, and hit him so hard that Dr. Gunn was on the front. The gun was on the floor and the, the, Joe Lewis and the police raced for the gun and Joe Lewis beat him to the gun. He picked the gun up and he walked over to him and he gave the gun back to the police. He said, don't you try that no more, man. <laughs> But the police still took him to court and told the judge that he tried to kill him. Yeah. It just so happened one of the attendants there, the black man, yeah. told the judge that ain't true. He said, I saw what happened. That's right. He said, he hit that man with a gun and that man picked the gun up off the floor and gave him back to him. And the they let him go. That was true. And that was back at the time when they liked to hang some of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that the other day when the when the, what does Trump call those boys? The boys. When the proud boys showed up in Washington. I'm so glad that Black Lives Matter didn't show up with them. <laughs> Be like what creates a storm. A warm air mass and a cold air mass. When the warm air mass and the cold air mass meet together, guess what? It's going to be a storm. Yes, indeed. But you prepare to meet God in the perplexing problems. You have any problems? I'm not wishing it upon you. But I want to tell you what, if you are, you ought to consider. And you ought to look up and you ought to pray and say, God, now, why is this happening? And you ought to analyze. And you ought to turn over every rock in your life and make sure that no sin is hiding. And, and you ought to look at every closet in your life and make sure there are no skeletons in there. Amen. 
And one man said, I'd search my closet to make sure no skeleton in there. The first one I opened, a big skeleton was grinning at me. <laughs> <laughs> we got to meet God in the, in the midst of perplexing problems. See, sometimes some of us, we, we messed up in our thoughts. We, we were, I mean, yeah, in comparison to God, all of our minds are weak, but some of us are weak minded. Amen. And we face problems and we're ready to swallow a, a, a bottle of pills. Yes. A sucker on a gun barrel. Oh, no. The other night, uh, this, this week, in St. Louis, a mother killed her little girl. Mm. And then killed herself. Mm. For what purpose? Because they were facing perplexing problems. Friend, when we got Christ in our lives, we, we're able to face and to deal with anything that he brings and love ourselves unconditionally in the midst of it. You see, if you love yourself unconditionally, you ain't gonna do nothing to hurt yourself. Amen. Amen. If you find me down there somewhere with a note written and a gun beside me and, and said, this is a suicide note, you know they lied. <laughs> Man, I love me unconditionally with God's love because God loves me. I hope I hope somebody will, will investigate. Yes, go to let her know. He cut he, he cut off his own wrist. I wrote I'm going to cut my wrist. Uh -uh. Somebody else wrote that. I'm saying, friend, we got to meet God with the protection problems. We got a lot of problems. You want me to name some of them? I'm going to leave y'all alone. Some of y'all are Yeah. We got time, please. We got a lot of problems. Perfection problems. You, you know what the, our problems are? What are We got eight major systems in our bodies. Well. And we allow these systems to control us. Mm -hmm. Do you know what your eight major systems are? Okay, then let's start right here. The nervous system. Brain, we got some messed up thoughts. Amen. Zig Ziglar said we engage in stinking thinking. Yes, sir. And some of us walk around like we got an outer lux out above our brains. Uh. Or that we have room to rent upstairs unpunished. Uh. We, we got some messed up thoughts about ourselves and about other people. Yeah. You know if your thoughts are messed up about yourself, you ain't going to be thinking right about other people. Oh, Lord. The nervous system affects us. Then we got some problems. Well, the circulatory system. Then we have the respiratory system. And then we we get we get problems in the respiratory system. But but you see these problems are coming from somewhere else. Why you can't breathe? You say, well, I don't got sick. I got sinuses. Maybe if you put that bottle down, or that, or some of that slack off on some of that beer. How about them cigarettes? It will tear down the immune system. How about them cigarettes? You come on up here and preach. <laughs> yeah, cigarettes, cigarettes too. Add it to the list. <laughs> well, you preaching enough down there, you don't need to be up here. <laughs> The respiratory system. Right. We do things that affect our breathing. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now I ain't talking about you know you, you catch yeah. a virus. Yeah, that, that affects you too. Yeah. Then there's the skeletal system. We ain't taking in what we need to keep this skeletal system right. The calcium and the potassium uh, and the selenium and the magnesium. What is osteoporosis? It's when the bones get brittle. Why? Because you're not taking in enough calcium. So that's four systems. We allow these systems to control us, and all of these systems are directly connected when the deterioration are directly connected to some state. Even the nervous system, wrong thing. It creates psychosomatic illness. It's one of the psychosomatic illness. It's when the mind, wrong thinking, makes the body sick. 
Uh, there's nothing really wrong with you physically, but you get to thinking so negative and, and, and stinking thinking, it makes the body sick. That's right. Yeah. That's right. There are a large list of psychosomatic illnesses that the doctor ha has published, doctors. Yeah. Then there are up the four other systems. We call them hypercomplex. Man, you go ahead and preach, Larry, preach! <laughs> now, I know you can't have this. Go ahead. You're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> now let's go on even on down to the other four systems. What are the other four systems? Let me out here. Digestive system. Now what, what mess up the digestive system? Eating the wrong thing, you see. Or, or it may not, you may be eating the right thing, but you could be eating too much of the right thing. <laughs> then there's the, the kidneys, the excretionary system that, that gets waste out of our body. That's six. What's the seventh one? The, the endocrine system. Scale. Now I know I, I need to do a better job taking care of my skin. I know y'all looking at my big hand up here saying, man, he leaves some lotion. <laughs> <laughs> Go on for the back check. I'm just saying, you see, we, we gotta love ourselves the way God loves us. Amen. And then then we are also affected, and this is the last one, see, and the devil has a lot of these systems, but he doesn't have this system, and it's called the reproductive system. We allow our reproductive system to, to misguide us. You see, nothing wrong with sexual urges and sexual desires. God has given them to us for the propagation and the increase of the population. But then he showed us how to direct it a certain way to our husbands and our wives. But, but the devil comes along and invites you to lust after somebody outside of your marriage situation and, and invite you, if you should get to thinking about it long enough, he'll invite you to go try to fulfill the lust and the desires that he's invited you to have, your reproductive system. Amen. Amen. Now I want to tell you about the family is the foundation of God's kingdom. Amen. Now let me talk to you women for a moment. All those of you who are married, God has given you to your husband as a what? A uh, help me, not a help mate. A uh, help mate is one who is equal. A help me is a servant. Now I want to tell you what I've noticed, and every now that I have to get on my wife. I said, look here, you can make this Christian journey easier for me. Uh, you can make it hard. Man, don't give me no attitude when I touch you or when I tell you I'm ready. I ain't ready all the time. I, I used to be ready all the time, and I ain't wasn't ready when I was young. I stayed ready. I don't want no attitude when I'm ready. Never ready. Yeah. In a jacket, buddy. You understand what I'm saying? Now, ladies, when your husband is ready, you ought to. I know I said this before, and some of y'all got offended. But but I'm repeating what an old woman said when I was at First Baptist Highland Park. She said a woman's legs ought to swing open like church doors for her husband. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is this. A man that's satisfied ain't going nowhere somewhere else looking to eat. You let your husband walk out the door hungry and you don't know where he's going to be. I just heard you go too far. You don't know if he can eat the back door, walk my house, work with him. You see how that sticky thing is? He's a prime example of what I'm talking about. That's right, don't go there. Don't go there. But if, if a man is satisfied at home, oh, man. I hear that. I hear that. Look, look, here, let me say something uh, uh, to you old school ladies. You know what the old school ladies do? Yeah, we got some old school ladies. Here. You know, the old school ladies 
they, they, they were trained by those older ladies. Amen. How to take care of the house, how to take care of the man. But the old school lady never did anything to initiate anything, but she responded when her husband initiated. Yes. We're the new age ladies. <laughs> You're going to have to start initiating some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when, when your husband get ready to walk out the door, grab him and put a lip lock on him. So her husband's going back home, baby. <laughs> If you don't, I'm going to tell you what. You got, some, you got some young women out there and some old ones. Jesus. I was delivering UPS. And I had some shit in my supervisor was riding with me that day. Uh -huh. We pulled up behind the master's inn to deliver a package to a house. Now, this has been a few years ago. Now, I'm good looking now, but poor man, I was showing up good looking. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't know what Pastor said that some of y'all be doing. Looking in the mirror lying. He said, man, I'm good looking. I mean, I'm good looking now, but I'm so sure not good looking then. I was Mark, I'm about your age. Yeah, Pastor, we pulled up. And I went to deliver the package and the woman came to the door. Her husband was sitting on the porch and a bunch of other guys were around. And I delivered the package, and she started to flirt with me in front of all of them, even her husband. They've been drinking. She did alcohol mess you up. Yeah. And so uh, she was after me, and my supervisor was on the truck looking, and her husband told her, he said, that man don't want your ugly ASS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was ugly. He wasn't lying about that. <laughs> she had two teeth missing in front of her mouth. <laughs> And she was ugly. Oh my God. But she ran out the door when he said that on the porch and grabbed one of them poles and she hollered out at me. She said, Baby, it ain't the music, it's the booty. <laughs> Snatched light in the door to get out of the way and smote them all with blinds. 
You see, the devil been trying to create a seed. That's what the Antichrist is. You see, he's trying to duplicate God. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. He is the monogenes, yes, the, the only biological, physical Son of God in human flesh. He's the incarnation of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the devil's trying to duplicate that. Mm -hmm. But he can't. So when the Antichrist comes on the scene, the Antichrist will be one that has been prepared by the devil and his thoughts and through negative thinking and one who has been given completely over to wickedness. And so when the incarnation time comes, Revelation chapter 13, the devil is going to kill the Antichrist. And then he's going to bring him back to life. But actually he's not bringing him back to life because the soul and spirit of the Antichrist will be in hell. But the devil is going to incarnate his body, possess his body like he fought for the body of Moses. In the book of Jude, when Moses died, the devil was there trying to take his body so that he could incarnate the body of Moses to make the people worship Moses rather than God. And Michael the archangel did not bring a real accusation against the devil when he sought to take the body of Moses. He just said to him, the Lord rebuked thee. And Moses was buried in God's wife's pot. Which means that nobody knows where he was buried other than God. Amen. Because the devil doesn't have a reproductive system. You see, uh, they, they were arguing about this in, uh, in Matthew chapter 22. Uh, and they said, Jesus, if, the, if a brother married a woman and he died, and the Lord sent another brother on a marriage. And said, there were seven brothers. Yeah. They all died. And, and, uh, and, and all seven of them married her. Whose wife would she be in the resurrection? And Jesus said, neither. He said, for they shall be as what? The angels of God in heaven who don't have reproductive systems. Amen. Meet God, prepare to meet God, number four. Not only in the proud rise plan and in the, with the pleasing purpose and through perplexing problems, but prepare to meet him with the proper perspective. Amen. Some of us will never get our perspective right until we make a decision to get into the Word of God and get the Word of God in us. Amen. That means to get God's Word in us and to get into the Word of God, we got to get the mess out of us. That's right. Some of us are real messy. That's right. Psalms 119 and 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, O oh God, that I may get the mess out of it, right. that I may not sin against thee. Amen. You see, the more you get into this Word, and the more you get this word in you, the more it's going to develop the proper perspective in you that God wants you to have. And we're going to have to meet him with a proper perspective. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. I guess I wasn't preaching a minute ago. <laughs> Number five. Not only meet him in the prior of Christ's plan and please and purpose and perplex and problem, but with the proper perspective. Luke 19 10, Jesus said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save those who are lost. Yes. And number five and family. How do you prepare to meet God? You meet him with powerful prayers. Amen. Amen. There's no one here or anywhere else worthy of praise more than our God. We meet him and prepare to meet him Amen. with powerful praise. The psalmist said, sing a new song unto the Lord. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, meet him with powerful praise. First Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever you do, whether you bring, do it all to the glory of God. Second Corinthians 10, 17 said, let him the glory and glory of the Lord. Jeremiah 9, 23 said, let not the rich man glory his riches, the wise man in his wisdom. The mighty man in his might, but let him the glory, glory of this, says the Lord, that I am the Lord who exercises unconditional love and judgment in earth. We meet him, we prepare to meet him with powerful praise. Yes, yes, the way Jesus, when he rode the ducky into Jerusalem, they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. The son of David, we are to pre prepare to meet God in powerful praise. Yes, are you willing to praise God? Glory yeah. to God. Are you willing to worship his name? Yes. yes we, we, how do we get
get to the priority of our plan? By following the way of God. Amen. How do we fulfill the pleasing purpose? By doing the work of God. How do we deal with the perplexing problem? By staying in the will of God. Amen. How do we have the proper perspective? Getting into the word of God. But how do we meet him in powerful praise? Engage in the worship of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, indeed. God is the spirit. John 4, 24 tells us. And they that worship him yes, must worship him yes, in spirit and in truth. That's right. The songwriter said faith. If the fields refuse to harvest, yes. and the trees no longer bear, yes. if the flocks forsake their shepherd, yes. and my head be bowed with care, yes. yet I know his ways are wonders, with this man made out of dust, and these lips of clay shall praise him, though the world be turned to rest. Right. If the roses lose their fragrance, yes. and the birds no longer sing, yes. if the rivers cease their flowing, and the bells refuse to ring, he said, yet will I praise God, because there will be a better day. Yes, sir. There will be a bright tomorrow. That's right. For God will never pass away. That's right. I hope you're prepared.